Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and good morning, everybody. I've prepared a set of slides. There are several. Um, at the end, uh, clearly, you will you can have a copy of the presentation. I will try to move fast in some of the slides uh, due to the time constraint. I hope that today it will be a good opportunity for you to understand uh, the peculiarity of the production of the vacuum vessel for the ITER project. Very few words about the company. The company is named this Walter Tosto. Walter Tosto is our president. He's still in the company, but the company is led by his son, Luca. We are a group today, a Tosto group. And uh, as overall group, we are approximately 1,350 1, employees with a turnover of 200 million euro per year. And uh, we are co-located in the middle of Italy on the Adriatic Sea, in the north of Italy with the company named Belledi, and in Bucharest and Oltenica with a subsidiary named Walter Tosto WTB. I guess you know the project ITER. We have not to spend so much information about the ITER project, but we just focus on our experience on, um, um, on fusion uh, research programs. The first one clearly is ITER, for which we are producing five sectors of the vacuum vessel in consortium with the other two Italian companies, Ansaldo Nucleare and Mangiarotti. Those are pictures taken from the manufacturing. I, I'm moving faster because clearly it will be the focus of today. We will show you later on. We are also involved in the, in the diverter, in the specific case, we are the manufacturer of 54 cassettes. Cassette body is the is the base is at the base of the vacuum vessel. Is the heat exchanger of the tokamak. Uh, let's say uh, hosting the diverters. And the prototype of the inner vertical target, one of the diverter. In this case, we were sub supplier of Ansaldo Nucleare. Last toroidal field casing for JT16, the casing for the magnets. So again, uh, as of today, we are going to focus on the manufacturing of the vacuum vessel for the Inter project to be installed in Cadarache and on south of France. Okay, this is a picture representing. Uh, our scope of supply, we are talking about five out of um, uh, nine sectors to be delivered in sectors frame and to be assembled at site by other companies. Each single sector of vacuum vessel can be sub-segmented in four segments, named PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 that are assembled in one site and then delivered to Kadarash. Which are the, let's say, the characteristic of each single sector. First of all, is the material. The material is named ether grade. Ether grade since uh, there is a specific grade that has been done in order to produce this component. The, com the code, to be used, that is a nuclear code, French nuclear code for research project, RCCMR. The use of very advanced welding techniques, we will spend a few words afterwards. The state of the art of non-destructive examination at the maximum of the requirements, like visual penetrant testing, radiographic, phased array, um, leak testing. Very tight tolerances requiring uh, extent use of uh, metrology is a part that is very precise compared to the sites and the, um, and the manufacturing techniques, having um, tolerances up to 0.1 millimeter or plus minus five millimeter for parts that cannot be machined, then just to be achieved by positioning and welding very very tight tolerances each single sector weight is approximately 500 ton 
with a dimension that is roughly 6.5 by 6.5 by 13 meter in height. And last, but very important, since it's a vacuum vessel with a very high uh, leak rate to be, to be achieved at the end of manufacturing. Okay, here we have a slide. I don't know if you are able to see something. It's, uh, it's uh, very detailed, but it's helpful uh, just to highlight which is the level of, um, of, uh, of detail to be developed during the engineering phase. Here you have, I, I don't know if you can see my, uh, the pointer of my mouse. Yeah, yeah. you, you can see. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, this is a sector. This is the segment PS2 assembled, one of the four segments that we have highlighted. Here we have sub assembly of a segment, and here we have parts. Uh, there are no parts here, loose parts that two people can, uh, can lift. So, just to have an idea of how big it is, how complex is the shape and from how many parts one single segment and then a sector is uh, is manufactured clearly here there is the complexity of the nuclear uh, components nuclear components means full traceability of everything for it, each single piece we have to register the origin the material all the people that have carried out any kind of the activity and everything shall be certified likely uh, one truck it will be not enough to deliver the certificate together with the sector just to have an idea of, of the level of certification okay we start with a video i hope is um, is working also for you yeah, you yeah. see okay this is a small portion is only representative but is uh, fully representative of what we have done as manufacturing strategy we start from the from the video and then we enter one by one into the detail this is a portion a small portion of the vacuum vessel that is characterized by two shells the inner shell on the plasma side and the outer shell onto the external between the inner shell and the outer shell there are those blocks that you can uh, you can see that are shielding blocks and uh, all the manufacturing is carried out by dedicated jigs that are developed under shell concept okay uh, let's start from this jig that clearly is manufactured and fully machined due to the precision and shall be used for the handling and for uh, to maintain in tolerance the part the jig is uh, fully cladded with the uh, area uh, that shall guarantee contact between the manufacturing part and the jig itself. On those jig, we started the manufacturing by the ribs, the ribs of the vessel that are the part that uh, shall um, help us to maintain the shape during the manufacturing. Okay, let's with this example start with these three manufactured ribs that are uh, clamped on the part. Welding is not possible, clearly. Then they have to be stiff, but not fully constrained. Once they are in position, we can fit the two plate of the inner shell. And more important, to close the, the jig to have the, uh, enough stiffness to, to carry out operation. We have a full alignment of the shells. Here, there is a representation of the full alignment. The precision of the alignment should be in the range of 0.5 millimeter. Then you can understand that with very large part, it's quite complex. Once aligned, uh, clear here, we can tack weld. So just block the part and control that uh, we achieved the designed shape. Once this is done, we can dismantle the lower part of the shell uh, uh, sorry of the jig we call shell because of the shell concept the lower part of the jig to rotate the part and to start operation for welding in this case electron beam welding 
we will spend a few words for in electron beam afterwards. Okay, all the welding uh, sequence are carried out with a, a predefined sequence that have been investigated uh, uh, even with a finite element distortion analysis. After the welding, we had a slider distortion. And before moving forward, we pay a set of machining of the extra material left before the welding in order to recover the tolerances that are lost due to the shrinkage. Okay. After the machining and the control, clearly we can fit those penetration that are named flexible housing. Clearly also in this case, we can tack weld and weld according to a predefined sequence. And clearly, we are going to pay all the tests, dimensional tests, visual tests, penetrant testing, radiographic testing, all the tests that we have to carry out in order to guarantee the quality of the parts. Then again, we have a new rotation. We uh, close again fitting with the lower part of the jig. And we have what we call the inner box. Inside the inner box, Okay, once finished, it means fully machined. We start the process of cleaning. We transfer the part in the clean room where there are the clean condition to carry out the installation of the IWS blocks. The IWS blocks are those blocks uh, to be used for the neutron screening of the fusion reaction are borat at the plate essentially. And then we can start with the fit up and the assembly of the outer shell. Okay, once done, clearly also in this case, we are going to weld and to complete the activity. We have, here we have followed a very um, simple and a small example of what we have done of this part. Clearly here, we have the fi very final machining after the last welding. And then we have completed the, the, the concept of the of a portion. You will see this portion now in the full sides compared to the sector. Okay, we were just talking about this small area. And in this space, clearly we have uh, we didn't enter into the detail of the manufacturing of uh, several loosened components uh, because uh, let's say it's uh, very time consuming. Nevertheless, I hope that the, ge the general concept, the general concept is, is clear. Okay, we enter one by one, but very roughly into the detail. This is an explosion of the part of a sector. Then we have the shell, the inner shell, uh, the ribs, that are made by webs and T-adapter. We have clearly the outer shell. We have ports of the vacuum vessel, the keys and the flexible housing that are the penetration that are welded both from internal to external shells. Okay, then starting with the forming activity, plate are uh, clearly are, will arrive in a, in a flat condition, needs to be cut and uh, form. In order to form, clearly we have identified for the shells what can be done in cold condition, in hot condition, or just by machining. Let me close the, the audio. Here you have an example of forming activity. This is a, a die to be used for forming. This is a cold forming and this is a hot forming. Hot forming is done putting the plate at 900 degrees Celsius to be formed in hot condition, to be calibrated, then reput in uh, up to 1,200 degrees in order to recover the original uh, uh, structure of the of the steel, and then left uh, cool down in a in a pool with the water at 20 degrees. This is the full process. This video is published by uh, ITER organization has been carried out here in Valcartosto in, uh, in, in Italy. And it's something with uh, almost 300,000 views today. It's a very popular um, 
among video of uh, ITER manufacturing. The T adapter are essentially, are essentially made by forging that are welded together and machined. The flexible housing that are very complex are uh, the heart uh, and the, the, let's say the structural part because are welded to the inner shell and to the outer shell and are the parts that have to uh, support the uh, inward shielding plate to be installed inside the vacuum vessel. Uh, the characteristic are, so the, the, the difficulty here is that those are 3D component and each single flexible housing is different by the other. And we are almost uh, 250 flexible housing, flexible housings for a sector of vacuum vessel. The ports are very demanding as well. Here we are talking about a dimension of three meters by 2.5 meters by 600 millimeters, 700 millimeters in depth. So those are very massive forging, welded and machined together in precise condition. Okay, here we have a, um, together the sub segments splitting. You can see the three parts to be put together. And clearly the very demanding part that are is the installation of the IWS with a dedicated procedures in a clean condition, in clean room condition. Also in this case, we have an obliged sequence of installation of thousands of blocks. So it's a really, really demanding job that requires a very extended engineering preparation. Here we are close to the end. Uh, transfer to assembly site that in for the first sector was in our partner Mangiarotti, for the second sector is here in, in Walter Tosto. Once the segment is completed and welded and fully machined, we transfer uh, by ship and we deliver to Mangiarotti. Here you have a picture of the full sector assembled. Few words on the side that we use it to call the project in the project. The first project in the project are clearly the jigs. Jigs are very massive, are very complex, required an extent engineering uh, activities, and uh, have to host parts that are not balanced with not fixed. Uh, so once rotated, uh, clearly you are going to move the center of gravity and clearly you have to take into consideration have to keep the the part intolerances without constraining them and they have to be used also for the alignment and for the manufacturing then clearly the engineering and manufacturing of the jig was one of the key factor of the success of the manufacturing of the of the vacuum mess another very important clearly is the welding. Um, here you can you can see a, a, a video during the execution of an automatic welding in order to achieve the quality of the required quality of the weld we were forced to develop our own welding torch. Uh, this has been requested because the level of requirement of the the filler metal once welded uh, were very high very similar to the base material in order to do that it was important to have the welding very close to the base material and to to completely mix the filler metal with the base material to have homogeneous characteristics this was for arc welding very important as well was also the electron beam welding i don't know if you heard already about uh, electron beam welding is a very advanced techniques that consist in focus um, a beam of electrons on the metal 
to fuse it and to have a permanent, jo permanent joint. Also in this case, we show you some video. Uh, this operation has been carried out in Germany at ProBeam. In order to carry it out, you have to put the part inside a vacuum chamber because you have to weld under vacuum condition. The gun with the generator of the electrons is handled by a robot and is fully um, fully uh, controlled from outside the, the room. The quality of the weld is very high, is very clean since there is no additional material needed, no filler metal. Then is a real fusion of the base material. And clearly an important role has been paid by the metrology. As you can understand, in order to achieve those tight tolerances at the end of the manufacturing, it was fundamental to have a continuous step and control during the manufacturing of all the activities under a very precise path with uh, very precise tolerances. This required an extent use of a laser tracker, CMM, anthropomorphic arm, and uh, other uh, dimensional tool. Okay, let's say maybe I was too fast. I, I even taken five minutes less than, uh, than, uh, than the allocated time for the explanation, but uh, maybe there is more time or we can come back to us.